In today's video, we'll be discussing the Internet Edge, including topics such as last mile networks, hosts, and physical media types. Let's get started. So we're going to pick up where we left off last time in Chapter 1 of Kuros and Ross. This section is talking about the network edge. So let's take a little closer look at the structure of the internet than we did last time. The structure of the internet is composed of several parts. The network edge, which includes hosts and access links. Entire networks can be part of the network edge. Within hosts, we have both clients and servers. These are connected by access networks, also commonly referred to as last mile networks. Access networks may have wired or wireless communication links or a combination of the two. The core of the network, on the other hand, is made up of routers that are interconnected with one another using wired links. Typically, these links are point to point. We'll discuss what that means later on. The access networks are designed to connect the devices, the hosts or clients, to the core of the internet. They do this via an access router, sometimes called a gateway. There are a few key properties to consider when discussing an access network. One is the bandwidth or access speed. These are measured in bits per second. Note that that is different than bytes per second. A particular access network may also either be shared or dedicated, meaning the bandwidth specified may belong to one subscriber or it may be shared amongst multiple subscribers. One common type of access network is the cable network. This uses coaxial cable, either buried or strung on poles, and this cable connects from a cable head end to multiple residences. Within the residence, the signal is split among services, going to both video and data devices. On the data side, a cable modem translates between the protocols used in the cable network and the home network, which is typically Ethernet. The cable network uses frequency division multiplexing, meaning that the data is separated across different frequencies, and these multiple channels are transmitted simultaneously. Some of these are designated for video only, and some of these are dedicated to the data services. As we mentioned a minute ago, one of the key properties of the access network is whether it's dedicated or shared. A cable network is an example of a shared network, meaning the data bandwidth is shared amongst all the residences on that particular cable run. Modern cable systems can easily exceed a gigabit per second of downstream bandwidth, and even beyond what this slide says, a gigabit in the upstream direction as well. The standards that govern the protocols used in the cable system are known as DOCSIS, with modern systems running DOCSIS 3.1 typically. The most common alternative to a cable access network is the DSL model. DSL stands for Digital Subscriber Line, and this is an example of a dedicated access link. One primary advantage of DSL is that it uses existing telephone lines, which by government mandate are already connected to every residence in the country. The drawback to this is that these telephone lines were not designed for high frequency data and their bandwidth is significantly limited compared to coaxial cable. Typical bandwidths are in the range of tens of megabits per second, in contrast to over a gigabit with cable. Even once we reach the residence, we still aren't done with the access network. In this picture, we show the cable modem, the home router, and the wireless access point all as separate devices. In modern systems, these three may all be combined into a single box. However, they perform the same functions as shown here. Home networks today may be composed entirely of wireless links, but may include wired ethernet links as well. The devices making up the home network perform a variety of functions. The cable or DSL modem translates between protocols, typically converting Ethernet to DOCSIS or DSL. The router communicates between private and public IP address ranges. We'll discuss what these mean later on. The router also typically has some firewall capabilities. Wired connections today are typically 1 gigabit per second or 10 gigabits per second, while modern wireless specifications go up to a gigabit per second, but in practice yield significantly less than that depending on the environmental conditions in the residence. The wireless access networks in a residence, known as wireless local area networks, are another example of a shared access network technology. So that bandwidth on the wireless network is shared amongst all the wireless devices using the same access point. The current most common standard of 802.11, or wireless LANs, is 802.11ac, which supports over a gigabit per second of bandwidth. More recently, Wi-Fi 6 has come out, which makes some improvements to speed, but also focuses on improving the security of wireless networks, which is a topic we'll get to in more detail later on. There are multiple technologies for wide area wireless networks. The most common of these, though, is the cellular network. Cellular networks use a variety of techniques in order to dedicate bandwidth to individual client devices. Enterprise networks are another type of edge network. They have many similarities to the residential networks we just talked about, but also include some devices we haven't seen yet, namely servers. In addition to being able to handle greater quantities of traffic than residential networks, the enterprise network often needs to be able to serve content to hosts outside their own network. Now we'll look at hosts in more detail. Hosts break data into packets in order to send it. This data comes from applications 
hands, and we'll talk about that in more detail in the next chapter. And it takes these messages and breaks it into chunks that are of the right size to send over the network. We'll call the length of these packets L. The packets are transmitted onto the access network at rate R. This rate corresponds to the bandwidth of the link they're being transmitted over. So we can easily find out how long it will take to transmit a given packet by dividing the length of that packet by the rate of the link. This gives us the packet transmission delay, which is one of four components of delay incurred by a packet as it traverses the network. All right, a little more detail on links as well. Links transport bits. Each bit propagates from one end of the link to the other. The physical link, or media, is what lies between the transmitter and the receiver. So things like copper, i.e. twisted pair phone lines, or copper coaxial cables are examples of media. And the core of the network links are commonly made of glass fiber. The three types of media I just mentioned are all examples of guided media. Unguided media would be something like a radio frequency, where it propagates in all directions through the air. Wired ethernet is another example of guided media, in which it uses multiple twisted pairs with much tighter specification than phone lines in order to transmit data at much higher rates. Coaxial cables have only two conductors, however, one surrounds the other, and this provides a natural shielding that increases their resistance to interference and thus increases the bandwidth that can be supported even over longer distances. Fiber optic cable carries pulses of light, so it is completely immune to electromagnetic interference. This makes it suitable for very long distance communication, as well as high bandwidth. In long haul fiber optic networks, repeaters are used to regenerate the light pulses in order to ensure that they have sufficient power to reach the receiver. Undirected channels, i.e. radio, have a number of properties that differentiate them from wired networks. Wired links are typically bidirectional, whereas the wireless channel is half duplex. This means that if a node is transmitting, it cannot also receive at the same time. Wireless networks are challenged by a number of environmental effects. These include interference, either from other devices radiating electromagnetic energy, or natural sources, such as the sun. The radio signals are also reflected and obstructed by features of the ground or buildings. Some examples of wireless links include terrestrial microwave, Wi-Fi or wireless LAN, cellular networks, and satellite networks. One significant performance differentiation for satellite networks is its increased latency on the order of hundreds of milliseconds, where terrestrial links tend to be in the single digits or tens of milliseconds. In the next video, we'll talk about the network core. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be useful, please click the like button. To be notified when more videos are posted for this class, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell.